Um, so I have been very passionate about art and although I pursued science as a degree, but art came as a hobby to me and I'm going to quickly put a link of my blog post where all the art and the um, relate, descriptions related to it can be found. Let me quickly get it to. So the art that we're going to make today is this one. It resonates with spring and you can see that the, all the elements in the art um, denote spring and life and greenery. And you can have a twist of your own when we start making the individual elements. But more or less, this is what we aim for today. Is, is my lighting okay? Can you see clearly? So the, the size that this art I've chosen is a four size, but today we're going to use on the uh, five by seven over here. So the color also that we have right now is sufficient for a smaller scale. I know every all of us have different ways of doing art. Um, so the way I normally start, I start by using the background. So I first take the colors out that will go into the background, which is the green. And then, then I leave a spot for the tree. But you can feel free whichever way you want. You can first draw the tree and then the background. So well, I'm just going to turn the camera towards the towards my working bench so you can see more clearly. This is the art that we will aim to make today. And the colors we would need are the primary colors. <clears throat> red for the flowers, yellow and green for the background, and blue for the sun. And then we can also keep adding different shades. For example, if you want to make a lighter blue, we will mix a blue and white. And if you want to make a lighter red or like a pinkish shade, we will mix white and red. And for making the tree trunk, we will mix red with a little bit of black, or you can mix red with a little bit of green. So it's up to you. So the first thing we, will, we are going to do today is take the canvas out of the packet, out of the black packet sheet over here. And I've taken these. If you have one brush or two brush, it's okay. We can make do with any of the bristle style because we'll be doing quite light strokes. So we don't need uh, big brushes. So what you can do is take the brush and dip it in water. Oh, before I started, I forgot to mention it to you. You can have a a jar of water or a bowl of water next to you and to mix colors if you have a if you have a palette mixer like this or if you don't it's okay we can have a normal regular plate from home so we can mix put the color at different spots and if you feel that you want to sketch out a few elements before we proceed, you can even have a pencil. It's totally up to you. This will be a totally freestyle painting. So I dip the bristles in the water. And the first thing I'm going to do is take the yellow color. I'm going to put it in my palette. So I would remind you that this is acrylic color. It, it can dry up really fast. So we want to add a little bit of water to the color. So it also becomes a little less dense.
the second color I'm going to choose is the yellow one, but you can take a tissue paper with you and just wipe off the bristle really tightly so it's free for the next use. Um, I will give you a few moments so that you can get the tissue paper. I forgot to mention that in the beginning. Yeah, second color I'm going to choose is the green one. And similarly, I'm putting it on my plate, plate or palette, and some water, and make it lighter. So if you want to make some pencil sketches in your in your drawing like this. So what I would generally do, I would go divide the canvas into half like this. And then just roughly trace over. This is the place where the sky would be, and then down at the bottom would be our green background and the grassy uh, background. And this is the spot where your tree would be. So I'm doing a very, very light and rough sketch. And then at this corner would be the sun. So I'm just making a circle. So uh, I'm not using a lot of pressure to draw because anyway, when we color, the colors would be covering all the sketch. And this would be the prominent spring bloom. And then at, at the side, you see where the bottom of the tree is. This is the place where the road or the path is going to be. So I'm going to start from the right, from the left corner and move it all the way down. Like this. So once you're ready with this, we we'll start coloring the, the background because we have yellow and green. So I have the yellow color now. In my plate. And I'm going to start by using very light strokes with the brush. You can hold the brush in the middle to give you light strokes. And you can add more. So the good part about this canvas is you can add as many layers on top of each other. And unlike water, it won't buckle, it won't become soggy. Um, if you want to make a gradient, you can coat a specific layer multiple times and then use lighter stroke to come forward. So you see the yellow is darker on the bottom and then lighter on the top. This is just a freestyle art, so you don't have to worry about if the color like leaks or bleeds to the other sections. Now I'm on to the last part where the tree is. So I'm coloring behind the tree.
it's up to you whether you want to do the brush from left to right in this direction or you want to go top to bottom in this direction or you can mix the both the styles yeah and we have a little bit of yellow on the bottom also <laughs> colored the yellow part and I'm going to use the tissue to wipe off the yellow color and I'm going to take some green and then for this green again I would ask you it would be your freestyle so you can make a few streaks here and there or you can do a continuous continuous color. Both would look really nice. So you can follow along and follow, see where I'm putting the emphasis for the green. This is to give us a, a sense of shade to, the, to, to our drawing. When you try to do it around the edges of, uh, of the layers, it gives us kind of a 3D emphasis. So broader at the bottom and tapering as you go towards the edge. And on the other side of the road, um, making it dark again. And see how I'm doing it. It's almost as if I'm scratching the surface. Yeah. So, so far we have done mild strokes and very gentle brush strokes. Now I'm going to do a little bit of stipulating what you need to do is take the brush up straight like a stick and you just need to touch the bristle and poke it so normally artists do it to make to give you to give a feeling of shaded grass like a bush of grass, a small bush or something. After we've made the bush, we will add a little bit of flowers to it. But right now we'll just continue doing the bush by taking your brush up straight and poking the bristles on the canvas. See? And I'm going to do the same on the other side. So you can also take a thick color, thick green color, and add it in certain layers. So it becomes like a shaded uh, bush. If at any point you feel that the color is bleeding, you can try to wipe it off. It's very easy. Similarly, I'm going to do on the other side of the tree. So it looks like we have these bushes. And because it's a sunny day, if you are getting these shades, on the various elements.
Yeah. Now that we still have our brush in the um, in the green, so I'm going to utilize the green color and not let it dry and start coloring the crown of the tree, which is the the top part which has the leaves. And here also you can use your own style. You can dilute the color, you can go side to side. Or in between you can do the stipples. I feel like I, I need a little bit of more green. So this green I got from the from the from the pot, and this I'm going I'm not going to dilute it anymore because I need this thick layer. So I got this thick layer, and now I'm just going to do a stipple again on my tree. So you will start to see some texture on on your tree. It's very easy. So we take the brush and I'm just going to apply like, like nail paint. It's just that I'm making dots. So when our art dries up, it would look like a 3D texture. Yeah. Now, as we are still in the green zone, I'm going to take a little bit of the diluted green and take a tissue and maybe dry it up a little bit. Now I'm going to add a little bit of grass. All you need to do is gently Take your bristle and make these really short lines and make sure when you're drawing the lines, you touch the canvas and you lift the brush immediately. Now I'm going to take a little bit of red because I'm going to focus on the tree trunk here. And we're going to make some brown with it. So I got red. For making brown, you can add a touch of black to this red, or you can try to mix a little bit of green to this red and it will turn into brown. See what, I got this green because I don't want to waste it. And I mixed it in my red color. More of green and less of red. So that would be the ratio I would say at this time. So now it got into a really nice brown color. And I'm going to add a little bit of water to it. So the good part about acrylic colors is when you add water to it, it just starts working like a watercolor. And when you don't add any water, uh, it's pure as acrylic. So I got the brown and I'm going to make these upward strokes for the tree. And also taking some of the thick color, which I did not mix water with. See how I'm going from top to bottom.
and because these parts were the extended root parts, so I'm going to cover this part also. You can add a little bit of branches in between. It's up to you. See, I added a branch. So art making is a very dynamic process. You can add more stuff, more elements as you go. Like I added a branch and I'm just using the bit of green that was left just to show that there are this is an this is a secondary branch so right now we have our tree ready and the background almost ready the only thing remaining is the path in between and for that, as you can see, I have used gray. And um, we're going to make gray with using black and white. More of white and less of gray. That's what I would recommend. But before that, I need to clean the brush. So I'm using the bowl of water and using the tissue to dab it and clean it tightly. Getting the white like this and I'm putting it on my plate. I'm getting the black. For the black, we have to be really careful because it's a very dominant color. It just dominates whatever shade you are mixing. So you want to be careful and take just a tiny bit of it with the tip of your brush. So I'm trying to take the one that is stuck on the lid. Like this. And I'm going to mix it up in the white. Just a portion of the white, not the whole. So I can construct a really nice shade of gray. See? Yeah. And then I'm going to add a little bit of water to it. So it becomes diluted. And I'm going to gently apply it to the path that we've left, the space that we've left. It can be a side to side stroke. When you reach the corner where you where another color has already been applied, so I would recommend you you just try to touch up with the tip of the brush to fill it. And to add texture, what you can do is take the thick coat of color and you can just paint, daub it. You can also they call it dabbing. So I'm just leaving it right on top. I'm just taking a little bit of more black and we'll try to add edges to the to the to the road. You see? just to give a little bit of definition. So I dip the 
paint brush directly into the black paint just the tip and I'm using the, just the tip to make these fine lines and because it's a sunny day again it's giving an impression that it is shaded and similarly on the other other side of the road now the bottom part of our art is almost ready for the top part we need just the sky and the sun and so if you start with the blue colors it may leak into the sun area what i would recommend is if we start with the sun and then when we do the sky we leave this sun space and then go across the tree and the sun and i'm again using the yellow color thankfully for me it hasn't dried up but if it has dried up for you you can take another dab of the color got the yellow color so for, for the sun we are going to be really um, use rich colors not that thin and on the other side i'm going to take red just be keep, uh, keeping it next to the yellow one And our goal is to make orange in the center and yellow on the edge. So for making orange, you need more of yellow and a, and a tiny bit of red. So because my brush already has red in it, I'm going to take yellow in it and I'll start mixing. See, I got a really nice um, and vibrant red orange. And dipping it a little bit in water so it becomes smooth. Yeah. And the sun that we've made with a pencil, I made two layers. So we can come to the inner layer and color it. We can color it in a circular fashion. And depending on your perception, what time of the day you perceive it to be, you can make the sun, the orange part bigger or smaller. But this is the size I'm going to choose for myself. Now I washed away the orange from my brush and I'm going straight for the yellow. Yeah. Now I'm going to add the yellow at the, from the periphery, like from the outer layer of the sun. See, again, I'm going in a circular fashion. And I'm slowly coming closer to the yellow, to the orange. And because we have a thick yellow paint here, I'm going to add a little bit of texture to the sun. Just take the color and drop it at random places. After this we will do the sky and in the very end we will add this spring blossom because that is something that I we would like to be on the extra, on the uppermost texture. So for the sky I have again washed my brush blue and on, on the side I would need uh, white.
So I got a thick blue color, put it on my plate. Opening the white one. on the side so they're not mixing yet i was thinking we would also need to make the sky darker in certain places for that we can mix blue and black when the time comes so i'm just taking a tip of the black and keeping it on the side and I don't want them to dry up, so I'm adding a little bit of color water to them, a drop. Yeah. So I'm going to start with just the blue and dilute it a bit with water. And I'm going starting from the other side of the tree, like from the extreme left. And I'm going to use a side to side brush stroke. So the brush strokes are also defined by the shape of the object that you're drawing. If you're drawing sun, which is uh, on, the, on the paper, it's circular in shape. So you take circular strokes, but for most of the things which are wide and rectangular, we use side to side. If there is something that is long, we use top to bottom. This, as if I'm like crawling like a mouse. So you go like, See, this is how the, the edges can be worked upon. I'm scared that this, I may just end up mixing the blue on the yellow and it would turn green. So I'm being a little careful here. And I've changed the stroke of my brush. I'm going in a circular way. Now, what do we do the, with the thick color that we have, the thick uh, blue? So I would recommend that we start adding texture. Just take it like a whole uh, bunch of paint and you can just drop it at random spots. The tiny bit of black that we've taken out, I'm just going to add a little bit of blue and that black to get a darker shade. And just add onto the layers. So it gives you a perception of depth. And I'm adding it on the very end, on the, on the uh, corner, on the top corner behind, behind the tree. See, I'm going in a diagonal fashion. Yeah. And now I'm going to clean the brush. And because I have a little bit of yellow left on my on my plate, I'm going to try to just lift the yellow, the thick yellow daubs. And because it's a summer afternoon, so I'm going to add just these tiny streaks of yellow. Yeah. 
you see so the thing about this kind of painting is that it is all textures and layers and very little blending so it is okay that the the, the effect of the sun looks uneven. If we are done mostly with this, with the entire painting, I, our last part would be to color the, the prominent summer bloom. And the choice of color is totally up to you. But what I I chose was a totally um, fan, like a non-real color. So a white, a white stem, and blue leaves, and red flowers. You can feel free to use whatever color you want. But um, my perception is, in this whole vibrant color range, white is the only thing that would stand out. So if you have the white already on your plate, you take, you don't dilute the white. We're going to take thick white and I'm just going to apply it in top to bottom stroke. So it really looks like a thick layer of clay. And I'm coming all the way towards the sky. You see the thick line that I made? And then you can flatten it on some places. Yeah. And to get a purplish hue of um, blue, I'm going to take red, just a bit of red, and mix it with blue. So that way I am able to save all the colors that I took and nothing is left. So if you're done marking the white plant, we'll start making these sideways strokes. So for the sideways strokes, you don't have to do much. You just take your brush and gently press it like this to get a branch. Then I come to the other side. I'm going to press it. I got a thick blob of red on my plate. And here I'm going to do a really free style of paint. We use brush and I'm going to do those direct staples like this, like making it into a bunch of flowers. Like this is how people also paint cherry blossom. <laughs> Finishing touch. So, I'm going to take the back side of the of the stick, not the tip, just the back side, and I'm going to pick up some white color with the back side of the brush. Yeah, like this. I'm going to hold my canvas and add these white tips at the center. So when you add white to any shape in the center, it gives a better definition. Yeah. 
yeah and using the same stick i'm also get, going to add a little bit of white in the sun just to show that it is really bright and scorching and another cool way of doing the using leftover color is i take the colors in my hand and i go like really free see i took the red with my hand and i'm going to make these finger impressions on the tree so you can title the art as like whatever comes to your mind and but the one that i chose for myself was a spring day i think the lightning lighting in my house is not that clear but i will try to do so when i tilt it you can see all the layers of the acrylic and even when it dries up it would be it would look so cute oh my god akina <laughs> this is absolutely beautiful so beautiful i love it <laughs> very very pretty you know you can you can see how everybody's take on this art is and you just brought your own perspective i'm so amazed so good whenever you feel it oh i love it i love the the colors you've chosen really nice so pretty are you maria you were saying something yes i have a question did, yeah. did what did you use when you finished your work so the the painting don't get damaged like uh, oh for sealing the painting do you use something no i because this is acrylic when it dries up it just has its own layer and it just tightens like uh, like glue when glue tightens up it makes a protective layer so acrylic does that it just dries up on them. you just need to save it from water and that's it yeah and this is the first time i did something upside down because i was not looking at it i was doing like this so but yeah, it works great <laughs> i love your art so we have one question yes so if you paint on wood like a yeah. frame or something uh, hmm. will the paint go away if you put it in water it's so normally it's not acrylic finished products in water oh you're not supposed to put okay we we save it from water if you want to paint something on the wood you can use oil colors and it would last it takes a long time to dry up but yeah and doing art with the community is so good it's like it's a way of connecting and also a way of treating yourself to the artistic delights 